So when I select a source document, it opens up in a, in a new window over on the right-hand side. Um, I can literally begin coding. You know, if I wanted to keep track of a date, I could select a passage of text, such as this is the year 2010. Um, I could then come over here um, and select uh, a new code. To add a new code, we'll call this um, date. Click OK. I have my new code. I hit apply. I have now coded the code date to this chunk of text, which is then recorded over here on the case card in the study window. Um, and then I can keep proceeding in a grounded theory approach. If I'm looking for something about uh, relationships, I might grab this whole passage, um, come back over here, add another new code, and we'll call this uh, relationship with husband. Click OK. Apply the code. And now I've associated this code with this chunk of text also recorded over on this side. So uh, hopefully you can see from the start the coding process is very straightforward. I should be aware that the currently open source, whatever that is, you only have one source open at a time, the currently open source when I'm coding is always going to get coded to whatever the current case is. So for example if I now wanted to open up a new source I could go to Sources again, open text file, select Interview 2, and I now have Interview 2 up here, right? But if I just start selecting and applying codes, and if I hit the Apply Code now, that code is going to be applied to my Interview 1 case. So opening a new source will not automatically take you to a new case because you may want to apply multiple sources per this case. Instead of this being a second interview, this could have been a, a, or a second subject, excuse me, this could have been a continuation of an interview with the first subject that you want to apply to this case. If you did do something like that, it's easy to rectify it. I can come over here, go to the Cases menu, say I want to do a new case, We'll call that interview 02. It's now moved me to that new code case. I can see that because it says interview 2 here. I can always go back to my first case, interview 1, by just arrowing back, right, and forward. Or from the pop-up menu, I can select interview 1 to navigate directly to a previous case. Okay. And if I sit there and I go, well, I, I put this code on the wrong case, what do I do? Well, no problem. You just sit there and cut the code off from that case, move to the next case, and choose paste. And now I've moved the code to the case that I want it to be on. Right? And now I can look and see, okay, I'm working on interview two, and uh, I, I've got case two up here. So now I can proceed with my coding, select another chunk of text, and I'm just going to arbitrarily code this with another code, hit apply, and keep on going throughout my coding process. All right. Um, if I decide, oops, um, I really didn't want to call this relationship with husband. I wanted this to be a new code. I can always add new codes at any time by just going here to new code and say uh, I wanted this to actually be view on life. Uh, and I'll click OK and add a new code. I can keep adding new codes as much as I want. Um, wants children to indicate whether they're planning on having a family or whatever other additional codes that I want to have here. Um, and then I can go back and I can sit there and say, okay, so that relationship with husband code that I, I did over here, I really meant that to be a view on life. So no problem. I can just go up to the codes menu, select rename. Uh, it has relationship with husband. I could change that to, uh, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, that's actually uh, 
I'm going to recode that code from relationship to husband to view on life. Hit select. It tells me, are you sure you want to do that? I click OK, and now it's been recoded as view on life. So you have fairly rich facilities through either copying and pasting um, or through uh, renaming or recoding codes to be able to move any codes around, change them, adjust them however you, you see fit um, to fit to where you want. If I have a coding scheme that I've already thought out, like let's say before I've even begun my coding, I have determined 50 or 60 different codes that I expect, themes that I expect to see in the course of the study. There are options to import a list of codes, and that's literally just a list of code names. One per line you could create in Microsoft Excel or Microsoft Word or whatever your favorite tool is to list out a set of code names. Save it as a text file, um, select import, and it will bring in the entire list of code names. As I'm coding these codes, uh, I may forget what I mean by some of them. Um, view on life, wants children. I have the ability down here to add a code description for this master code. I could remind myself that wants children uh, is an indicator that the person sees having a family as important in their life. And now I have a little annotation about what that code means. If I go click on other codes and, and uh, come back to this one, oops, I'm sorry, I coded that to the wrong one. I put it on uh, a relationship with husbands that are wants children. And again, if you do something like that, you can always copy it and paste it to put it in the right code. So, and then if I come back, there's the annotation. Um, and uh, just to be clarified, all of this capability for basic coding and renaming or recoding or annotations are uh, in, in both the 3.0 series of hyper-research and in the 2.0 series of hyper-research. Um, some of the features that distinguish the new 3.0 our, our ability to have code groups, which I'll show you in a bit in the master code list, um, as well as the ability to open uh, other document types than just the text files that I'm using as examples. Um, and let's show code groups. So let's say I start getting a number of codes in here and I'm interested in sort of categorizing them further. Uh, in only in Hyper Research 3.0 and above, we have this feature called Code Groups. And Code Groups are just an organizational tool for your code. So maybe a bunch of my codes relate to uh, attitudes on life. And we'll create a code group called Attitudes on Life. And we will place Wants Children, which is a code, under that and view on life under that. Um, and we might create another code group called relationships. And we put relationships with husband under that. And all that I've been doing to organize these codes this way is literally after creating the group, I've just been dragging the codes and dropping them uh, under the various groups. And you can collapse the groups if you want um, so that I can, uh, let me collapse, oops, I'm clicking too many times, so I can collapse the group or expand the group, collapse the group, expand the group. Um, if I have a lot of codes um, and we have clients out there that are working with code lists literally with thousands, many, many several thousands of codes, uh, code groups is an invaluable feature uh, for organizing large code lists into themes. Um, the theme itself uh, is not a code, so you can't actually code a passage of text as relationships. But you can do this nifty feature, which is um, 
if I had several codes, and let me just add one more for this example, if I have a relationship with children as another code, and we'll put that in relationships, if I have a passage of text over here, I'll just pick some arbitrary chunk, I could actually pick the group and apply and you've noticed that what it's added has been every code in the group is now attached to that chunk of text. So we have some, you know, broad themes and you look at a passage of text and you go, all these themes apply. You can just click on the whole group and code that and you get all the individual themes applying in one, one action, one click. Um, again, at research where our, our our philosophy from day one, and a little bit of digression into our history, ResearchWare has been around for over 20 years. Hyper Research has been around for over 20 years. Um, we, we were the innovators of some novel features in the field. We were the first qualitative package to introduce multimedia. We were the first cross-platform qualitative data analysis package, a number of other things like that. Um, we started the company 20 years ago with a philosophy that uh, research should be easy. Um, and what we meant by that is the mechanics of doing research should be easy so that the researcher can spend their time and energy on what's important, which is, which is the research itself, which is understanding the trends and themes and meaning behind their data, that whatever it is that they're, they're looking to discover. So we've tried to maintain a very intuitive user interface in our products over the years. And I think you can see we've only touched on basic coding here, and I've got auto coding and a lot of other nifty features to show, as well as the retrieval part of this basics, which is how to report information out, which is actually very powerful. But I think you can see here that the basic coding process is extremely easy in hyper research. Um, and, and that's a philosophy you'll see throughout the package. We find that a lot of our customers uh, can purchase the software and with our included tutorials, they just spend some time going through the tutorials or playing around in the software and they're up and running uh, for other folks. Uh, they ask for a little assistance either through our tech support group to get them going or through webinars or chats that we have. Um, but if you compare that to some of the other folks, and I, I'll, I'll be polite and not mention names, um, where they offer, you know, one day to five day workshops costing hundreds or thousands of dollars. And frankly, in order to figure out how to use their software, you, you almost have to go through the workshops. Uh, you know, I, I personally would rather spend those five days working on my research rather than having to learn the intricacies of a really complicated piece of software. So research where it has a lot of power behind it, but we try to make sure the basics remain fairly intuitive. And again, you'll see that as we go along with a few basic concepts.